Human language has a hierarchical structure. At the base are phonemes, the smallest units of speech that can be distinguished and named. For example, the word bat consists of three distinct sounds, b, a, t. The English language consists of 26 letters in the alphabet that contribute to 44 phonemes. Next up are morphemes, the smallest units of meaning in language. In English, adding s to the end of most nouns indicates that it is plural. So this level can include words, prefixes, and suffixes. Next are phrases, or units of words grouped together to create specific meaning, and sentences, complete thoughts that include a subject and a verb. Both phrases and sentences rely on units of grammar in order to create meaning. Grammar is the way that sentence parts are related to one another in a sentence. A key part of grammar is syntax, the system of rules used by a language specifying how words may be arranged in sentences. Linguist Noam Chomsky introduced the idea of universal grammar, or the unconscious and innate understanding of whether a sentence has been correctly formed. He pointed out that speakers of every language naturally perceive the grammatically correct formation of sentences, even though they are never given direct instruction. He believed that this was due to a universal innate grammar program that all human beings are born with called a language acquisition device. Other theorists argue that there is no grammar program in the brain. Instead, there is a language system that relies on various parts of the brain working together. Still others propose that both biology and experience are responsible for language development. What we do know is that language processing units are distributed in the brain. For example, Broca's area, which is located in the left frontal lobe near the areas of the brain that govern movement, aids in the production of speech. Wernicke's area, located in the left temporal lobe near the auditory cortex, focuses on speech comprehension. How children learn language has also been the focus of psychological study. We know that children understand language long before they can produce speech. In fact, infants are born able to distinguish phonemes from all of the world's languages. But as they learn the sound structure of their native language, this ability disappears. Eventually, people can fully distinguish only the phonemes from their native language. Speech production typically starts around six months with babbling, repeatedly uttering one-syllable sounds. At around 12 months or one year of age, they begin uttering single words. This is aided by parents or other people in the infant's life who speak to them more slowly than normal, in a sing-song voice known as mother ease. It's the same voice that we use when we talk to cute animals. Oh, look at that puppy! They also use simple sentences and repetition. Around the age of two, children start to utter two-word combinations, usually to describe actions. At this stage, they also tend to use telegraphic speech, a developmental step in language formation involving the omission of small words, such as articles or prepositions. So instead of, excuse me, mother, could you please pick me up? They will just shout, me, up. More than half of the world's population grows up bilingual or multilingual, meaning that they have the ability to speak more than one language. Learning more than one language simultaneously can initially slow down language acquisition, but it ultimately leads to stronger language skills. If you want to learn another language, you should know that the acquisition of a second language is easier at younger ages. Some researchers have hypothesized that there is a critical or sensitive period for language acquisition that ends at puberty, when the brain becomes less plastic. That said, adults can still learn new languages. A person moving to a new country is likely to learn the language more quickly through acculturation, a process by which they become socially and psychologically integrated into their new environment. However, they will probably never be mistaken for a native speaker. The relationship between language and culture is one of continued investigation. People who are fluent in more than one language anecdotally report that they feel different when they speak different languages. This has led to theories about linguistic relativity, the idea that language determines the nature of thought. While there is more to thought than just language, it is clear that it can have an impact and that language, thought, and culture, beliefs, lifestyles, habitats, and traditions, are all intertwined. Figuring out how each of them shape the other is kind of a chicken and egg problem. A broader philosophical debate is whether or not animals have language, or anything that might approximate it. Researchers have shown that species communicate through sound and gestures. Dogs can bark, peacocks display feathers to attract mates, bees indicate to their hive mates that they have found nectar by dancing, but communication is not language. Other animals, such as Coco the gorilla and Alex the parrot, 
have learned something closer to language, but researchers still have not found evidence of an example of true language in the wild. <laughs>